Why so serious? You thought Dante was going to be here, didn't you? Not today. I'm here at the 2009 Boston Comic Con with my version of uh, Mr. Dante Luna's episode. I am OTO, if you don't know me by now. Um, part of the Prime Suspects rap group, but one of the things I like to do in my spare time, you know, as a young man growing up, was read comic books. And this is possibly the biggest event that you could hold with all these people and all these comic book fans in just two days. And this is the Boston Comic Con, and I want you guys to come check this out. We're going to be interviewing some very uh, good people, some uh, artists, some writers, hopefully, some independent comic book companies, you know, up-and-coming ones. Um, we're going to just show you a whole bunch of aspects of a whole different things, some artwork pieces. You might check out some nice B-rolls or some of some uh, some stuff that you might want to get yourself. So make sure you check this out. Stay tuned. Take care. <laughs> Green Lantern. I didn't see his ring. Here in effect, the place to be. I'm here with Mr. Tim Sale, creator of, uh, uh, of a whole bunch of great artwork for uh, Marvel and on uh, DC. A lot of image stuff too. Um, definitely make sure you check these guys out. Um, does some stuff with a uh, Hulk, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, Daredevil. Uh, I really sort of got, I got serious about drawing comics when I was about 13. 13. Uh, I did go to school, but I'm mostly self-taught. Uh, I went to the San Diego Comic-Con in 1988 for the first time. And I met people there, showed them my work, uh, and I started to get work after that. Uh, professionally, the first work I did was uh, inking, basically. Uh, and that was for a book called Myth Adventures. <laughs> hey, with Mike McCone, um, does some great stuff. Uh, Deadpool, Suicide Kings covers, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Punisher. Um, ask him a couple brief questions, make us, you know what I'm saying? Real quick, check it out. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm O. O? Yeah, O. Okay. Um, what does O stand for? OTO. OTO? What's yeah. OTO stand for? Overtime often. It's actually I'm actually a writer, a songwriter. So, okay. You know, hip hop things like that. So yeah. um, how um how long have you been doing um artwork now? Uh, 21 years this year. 21 uh, years. Professionally, this year? yes. Uh, your yeah, accent. Where are you from? I'm from England. Oh, England. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I'm from England, but I moved to New York about four months ago. Four months ago? Yeah. Okay. So um, how long have you been doing stuff for uh, Marvel? Uh, off and on for about 20 years. Uh, really? I started with DC, but uh, I moved to Marvel after about a year, a year and a half. And I've kind of went back and forth between the two companies ever since. I took my portfolio to a convention in England and I showed it to the editor in chief uh, of DC Comics at the time, a gentleman called Dick Giordano. Okay. And uh, he took samples away with him. And, uh, a few weeks later, the editor of um, Justice League called me up and asked me to do a fill in. And I've been working steadily ever since. I've seen some of your stuff. Um, I think it was the 24-7 uh, for uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Yes. Uh, the 594 or something like that. Um, 595, I think, 6 or something like that. Um, why is Spider-Man's head so big compared to his body and like anybody else that draws him? Um, the way I draw him that Yeah, way? yeah. Um, I, I, really I like love it, by the way. I love thanks. it. I just, I just wonder why. I, I think he should be, um, like, ideally, like a 17 year old scrawny kid. Yeah. Um, and I know he's meant to be this 28 year old who did supermodels. But to me, in my, in my head, he's always this kind of scrawny teenager. Oh, he's um, great If you draw the head slightly larger, it just gives the impression that he's kind of this gangly, um, kind of a little, little bit alien looking um, kid. Just makes him creepy, makes him weird. Um, so that's why I like it. What's going on, y'all? I'm with Cliff Chang, uh, artist for DC Comics. Uh, also done a lot of stuff for Batman, Green Arrow, uh, Black Canary. I used to be an assistant editor at DC Comics, working at the, in the Vertigo group. And then after a couple of years of that, I went freelance and I've been drawing ever since. I went to uh, I went to school for English Lit and I did a little bit of artwork and when I came out I thought I was going to be a lawyer but I started 
uh, working as an assistant editor at Vertigo, and uh, in, this, in my spare time, I was working on pages and getting my portfolio together. Right. Yeah, after a couple of years of that, I you know had good enough samples, and, and I was able to show stuff around, and, and was able to get work. How did you get that break at Vertigo, at DC? Uh, at DC, um, to work there as an assistant. Um, they just happen to have an opening. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 funny. I, I thought that it was going to be hard for me to break in as an artist, but you know, as it turns out, it's it's even more difficult to break in as an editor because there's even fewer spots available. Yeah. But luckily, you know, I was able to get in. If I that one. Yeah. We're here again with Koi Fam, artist from Marvel Comics, uh, a lot of Hercules stuff, Mighty Avengers, Secret Invasion. Um, a whole bunch of great, unique stuff that I can think about off the top of my mind. Just incredible artwork, incredible, incredible stuff. Well, I've been doodling since I was a kid, but uh, professionally started drawing, I think, 2005. Actually, before this, uh, I, I was a lawyer. So I was doing, I was working in the courtroom, doing all that stuff, and drawing comics on the side, going to conventions. Then I think 2003, 2004, at Boston, the only Wizard Boston show. Uh, Marvel came by and said, you want to work for us? And a year later, What If Spider-Man book came out, and it's just been psh, up from there. A lot of people want to know, like, how, how do you get into comics, and how do you follow your dream? What I always tell people is listen to your parents, go to school, you know, do the real job, all right? I mean, I did the law thing for years. I did this on the side, you know, so there's always that security there. So when it was time to quit, it was easy. I just said, this is how much money I make. You want me to draw full time? You need me to pay me, you know? So, and, and so it was an easy switch. I didn't have to struggle. You know what I mean? So if you want to do something fun, my advice, I mean, there's a different path for everybody here. But my advice is get a regular job. It doesn't matter how much it stinks, how much you hate it. Get that security, all right? But always have a hobby, you know what I mean? So when it's time for that hobby to blow up, you can make that switch easy without sacrificing anything for your family, sacrificing anything for yourself. It's an easy switch. Well, I did some commercial stuff when I was in like high school. I did like uh, those commercial signs that you see like for construction companies. I was like, man, you know, I can make some dough off of this. Everything's going all right. And then when I got into uh, college, I was doing uh, some ad work for Solo Cups doing like uh, cleanup work and stuff like that but then um, I went to school for fashion illustration and I worked for uh, you know department stores and stuff like that doing their stuff but once I got burnt out from that a buddy of mine was in comics already and he needed some help so I started working with him I'm like man this seems kind of cool and it's something you did when you were a kid might as well get into it so I uh, started doing that I came to like conventions like this to uh, show off some artwork and stuff like that see like Walt and everybody else showed like already pros you know do I have the chops to do that? I showed them, they should, you know, told me what I should work on, went to another convention, and then they offered me a job. I did a couple of independent things, like uh, doing backgrounds for people, but uh, for my own professional work, yeah, Marvel was my first big gig. I did uh, Wolverine 96, and that was my first gig, and then from there, I did uh, a lot of X-Men books, fill-ins, and then after that, I started jumping around different companies, but primarily worked for Marvel. What's going on? We're here now. With the independent portion of the whole, whole artistry, the comic book game. Here at HB Comics, it uh, stands for Hebert Brothers. Uh, my, this is my brother Alan, he's the uh, uh, head of continuity and uh, head writer. I am the uh, artistic director and the artist for Laser Man. My name is Mark Slater, I'm a freelance illustrator who's right now been working in the comic book industry for the last year promoting myself in the local Boston Comic Con scene. I myself have been to three different art schools, so I have varying degrees of proficiencies in all mediums, and comic books is just what I keep getting pulled to. Uh, I'm an illustrator, a cartoonist, I also do my own artwork, uh, I do my own posters and graphic design as well, I also draw comics for Severed Head Comics, I contribute to everything I can. Um, I just try to do strange, quirky artwork, stuff that people haven't seen. I always wanted to do film, but uh, I just, it was so hard to get into and you got to move to like California if you really want to do anything. So uh, I thought, what can I do that's creative and um, 
makes money at the same time. And so I went into graphic design. I always say you have to start from day one. Start with the first page. People always have ideas, but it never comes out. It always stays in their head. If you draw, if you draw that first page, if you write that first line, that's how you get started. Yeah. That's